Welcome back, scientists. Today, our Cornell Notes topic is working together body systems and homeostasis. So we're going to be talking all about some of the different body systems and some examples of how they work together to maintain homeostasis in our bodies, which is directly related to our essential question. How do our body systems work together to maintain homeostasis? So before we move on, make sure that you have your Cornell notes all set up with your topic, your essential question, your main section for your notes, a section off to the side for any questions or vocabulary words, and then a section at the bottom for our summary. So first of all, what do we need to maintain homeostasis? What are we talking about when we say homeostasis? Homeostasis is that constant internal conditions in our bodies and our cells that we want to keep stable and not have varying as much as the environment. If we didn't do anything, our body temperatures would fluctuate wildly. We wouldn't be able to keep all of our proteins working. So it's really, really good to maintain homeostasis. And in order to do this, we need a couple things. We need to have food. We need to have water. We need to have some oxygen from our air. We need a way to get rid of waste products that our cells and our bodies won't use or will actually poison us if they build up. We need ways to keep us healthy if we have some pathogen, some something that's going to make us sick invading our body. We need a way to get it back out of our body. And we need ways to send messages within our body to tell different parts of our body, okay, here, I need to eat more food, so I'm going to send a hunger message to my stomach. Or, oh, I just touched a stove that's really hot, so I'm going to pull my hand away and not touch stoves in the future. Ways to react to our environment. An example of some body systems that work together we have our digestive system, our cardiovascular system, and our excretory system. Remember, this is the three systems that are working to break down our food into nutrients. They then transport nutrients to the cardiovascular system, our digestive system, the lining of our intestines, the nutrients actually move through that into our blood. The heart in the cardiovascular system pumps nutrients with the blood to all of the cells in our body because every single one of our cells needs nutrients, it needs energy. Cells of all of those systems use the nutrients for energy, so we break down sugars, we get some protein, all of those good things in our food. If you want to take a look at some of our closer things that we need, next time you're fixing breakfast cereal, go take a look at the nutrition labels. That's some of our main nutrients that we use. And then finally, cells always produced waste. So we have carbon dioxide, we have some other substances, we've got ammonia, we've got nitrogen substances, we've got breaking down cell parts. All of that gets pushed out of our cells, back into our blood, and then transported all the way to the excretory system, to our kidneys that clean our blood, to our bladder and our rectum that then leave the body. So we get rid of all of the things that would make us sick if they stayed inside us. Another example of some systems that work together really closely are our nervous system, our cardiovascular system, and our endocrine system. So in the nervous system, our brain will actually monitor our blood levels for essential nutrients, for saying, oh dear, we have some energy, because our brain is like the control center for our entire body. When those levels drop, the brain realizes it, and it sends a message to the endocrine system. Endocrine system, remember, is our hormone system. So all of those messages that aren't electrical messages are going to be hormone messages. The endocrine system releases hormones, to help regulate the nutrient levels in our blood, to help say, okay, we need to get some more glucose in this blood, we're going to release some glucagon in there. Or we need to uptake some glucose out of the blood, we're going to take some insulin. 
Also, the endocrine system will say, hey, uh, we've just taken up a bunch of glucose and we're getting pretty low. We need to refuel. You need to go eat something. So it'll release hormones that cause you to feel hungry. And I'm sure what all of you know what you do when you feel hungry, you tend to go find a snack. You tend to go eat something. So you're obeying those messages that your body tells you. This diagram is just showing some of the complexity in our body systems working together. We've got over here waste elimination, which includes our digestive and our urinary system. And then we follow that arrow back to some other systems. Hey, there's digestion over there, which includes the digestive system. Here's coordination. You kind of need to coordinate yourself in order to eliminate some waste. You need electrical impulses sent through the body and hormones. That's going to be your nervous system and your endocrine system. And then the way that we transport everything in our body is through our circulatory system. All of our down here, we've got some cells, we've got tissues, we've got organs. All of these work together to form our systems. Amazingly, here's our levels of organization that we've been talking about. It's really kind of amazing I think, how all of these systems work together and how you can draw this incredibly complicated flow chart of all of the connections between what we're learning. So my challenge to all of you is to create your own diagram showing some of the relationships that you're learning about. And it doesn't have to be like this one. You can add on pictures. You can take a piece of paper and just kind of draw, put down what your mind sees as the connections are. So that's my challenge. That is our last slide. I will be signing off now. Until next time, be curious, ask questions, and have a great day.